So thank you all for being here tonight. I know that um, we have some inclement weather that's going on um, in some areas of the country. So we really appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Um, today's webinar is going to focus on financial well-being, and it is hosted by the Arthritis Foundation. Um, and I also want to thank the Arthritis Foundation for the opportunity to be able to moderate for you all today. So as we all know, arthritis and other chronic illnesses come with a really heavy financial burden. We're going to do a deep dive into these challenges. We'll talk through those challenges, but also we'll talk about how to navigate those challenges, including sharing strategies, tips, and resources. So first off, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Rekha Sridhara, and I'll be moderating today's session. I'll be sharing some tips and tricks with you based on my own chronic illness journey. Um, and also we'll be hearing from two other panelists um, that are going to share their expertise with all of you. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a chronic illness warrior. I've been living with lupus and pulmonary arterial hypertension for over two decades, 23 years to, ex to be exact. And I just celebrated my 23rd year um, in August. So um, lots of experience to share with you. And I totally can relate to all of the challenges that you all experience, um, as well as the good times. So um, those challenges are difficult. They are hard to navigate. There's a lot of um, different complications that come with it, including financial implications. So we're just gonna dive in and get started and really focus on this topic today. And I hope that you're gonna leave today with some great information and strategies that you can take away with you. So we're gonna start off with talking about just some quick housekeeping items. Um, the first is all of you have been muted. Um, but you do have two options to be able to communicate with all of the, the um, participants as well as myself and the rest of the panelists. Um, you can use the QA function, which is located at the bottom of your screen. If there's a toolbar there, it says Q&A with a box with a question mark. Feel free to click on that and you can ask questions. That will come um, into that chat feature and we will see all those and we'll, we'll respond to those. Um, sometimes in live format, but we'll also save 15 to 20 minutes at the end of the session to be able to answer questions live. We also um, have the chat feature. So if you do wanna communicate in the chat, um, that's also located in your toolbar and you can um, communicate um, there as well. Um, at the end of this session, you'll receive a post-event survey. Please take some time to complete that. That gives the Arthritis Foundation some more um, information on what you liked about the session, what you didn't like, and ultimately those um, that feedback can be used for future opportunities that are offered by the Arthritis Foundation. In addition to that, I just wanted to share two resources that are available from the Arthritis Foundation. Um, that includes youtube.com and arthritis.com. Both the YouTube channel and the website for the Arthritis Foundation includes an abundant amount of information. Um, so feel free to check that out um, after today's session. Next slide. So we're gonna start off with a poll to find out um, what topics you're most interested in learning about today. Um, we're going to talk a lot about a lot of different information, but by getting your responses to this poll, that will give us a better understanding of where you want us to dive deeper um, and what you want us to focus on um, in particular. So um, take about 30 seconds to complete this poll. You can click on the options. I will read through them just so that you have a sense of um, what the different options are. So you can click on A, maximizing health insurance benefits for comprehensive coverage, or B, money saving strategies for medication and medical equipment and reducing procedure costs. Option C is understanding tax rules related to arthritis expenses. Option D, general financial planning for managing arthritis, or all of them. You want to know everything you can possibly get information on, you can click E, all of the above. So I'll give you 10 more seconds to complete this. All right, thank you for all your responses. This is great. So um, 
63% of you want it all. You want to know as much information as possible and we're gonna give it to you. Um, it's gonna be jam packed, it's gonna be great. We're gonna have an awesome discussion given the number of people we have. Um, and let's just get started, let's dive in. Next slide. So I've introduced myself, I'll be moderating your session. Um, we also have two other presenters here. First, we have Nick Turkis, who is the Senior Director of Health Promotion and Community Connection at the Arthritis Foundation. And we're also joined by Kimberly Johnson, who is the Manager of Clinical Quality at Elevance Health. And so you'll be hearing from both of them shortly um, later on in this presentation. So for today's session, um, we're hoping that by the end, you'll be able to understand the connection to financial health and physical health, that you'll be able to navigate insurance and medical care resources, and that you'll be able to discover ways to re reduce common household expenses. Next slide. So as you all know, chronic illness is super expensive. It is quite the burden. Um, and I just wanted to share a few stats with you. The estimated healthcare cost of arthritis, if you didn't know, can be as high as $14,000 per person per year. That's wild when you think about, um, you know, what that looks like as far as doctor's appointments and medical um, specialty visits, um, treatment uh, interventions, et cetera. Um, and I also wanted to share that lupus, is, which is what um, I have for chronic illness, has one of the highest financial tolls, and that can be as high as $50,000 per year per person for those that have severe lupus. You know, if we, knowing that that's, that is the cost of um, living with chronic illness, that's truly a financial burden. It's real, it's stressful, it's it's a difficult problem, um, but it's a reality that we all live with and have to navigate. But the good news is there are programs, there are resources, there are supports available to pay for the cost of medication and other healthcare related costs. These can include patient assistance programs, copay assistance programs, and private assistance programs. Um, all of these programs um, are available to all kinds of people whether you have insurance, whether you don't have insurance, um, whether, you know, and it's, and it, in most cases, it's not income-based. So um, really there's something for everyone. I think oftentimes people um, assume that they might not be eligible given that they have insurance or they work and have an income. That's not necessarily true. I myself, um, I am fully employed. Um, I do have a partner and, you know, between the two of us, our income is, is fairly decent. Um, but I have been able to access copay assistance programs to pay for um, my medications, which has been a, a really a lifesaver in that the medications that I'm on, you know, lots of medications, which I know you all can relate to, um, you know, that adds up. And so, the easiest way for me to be able to navigate navigate that space has been um, through my pharmacy, as well as through the doctor's office. Typically, in your doctor's office, they have um, they use different terminology, so it's going to vary depending on your doctor's office. But you can ask to see if they have a financial advocate or if they have um, a case manager, a case coordinator, those are usually the terms that are used. And those folks can help you navigate the different programs and resources that are available to you to be able to pay for your medications or other health-related costs. Um, there's also, um, you can talk to you, your pharmacies. So for example, I go through Acredo and Express Scripts, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. They handle all of the mail order specialty medications. And you can talk to the representative and ask them, you know, are there any copay assistance programs for this medication? In most cases, there are. And um, it's as simple as get calling the number and they'll give you the number. You can get a, a coupon code that you then share back with the pharmacy. And it's as simple as that. And it covers you for quite a bit. Um, and they tell you exactly 
roughly how long it is covered for, what the total amount is. Um, so those resources are available and they are definitely something I would recommend that you look into and tap into. Next slide. So next up we have creating a budget. Um, you know, it's really important to kind of know how much you have coming in. So that includes um, if you work, what your salary is, if you're on disability, what that amount is, if you have a partner that's supporting you, what it, what are they contributing um, into that budget? Um, so that's your first starting place of knowing what your income is. Based on that, um, you know, you want to list out your expenses, your utilities, the cost of um, food, the cost of your doctor's appointments, your medications, all of the things that you're pouring into, you want to make that list um, to know exactly where you need to set aside funds. And then you want to track your spending. You can track your spending weekly, monthly, yearly. It really depends on, you know, what's going to be helpful for you and the budget that is available to you. Um, so you want to track. And then um, you would want to adjust your budget based on what's important to you. You might have a budget for um, emergency funds, a fun fund, um, a medical fund. You know, you depending on what's important to you is what you want to um, utilize and help you figure out how to adjust your budget. There are a lot of um, great apps and online tools that you can tap into to help you with um, identifying your income, tracking your, your budget um, and your spending and um, figuring out how to, you know, break that down based on your preferences. Um, one of those resources is through um, AARP. They have a great um, resource for budgeting um, and uh, a specific tracker to help you with um, figuring out how you want to budget based on what you have coming in for income. Um, so there's that, and then we can go to the next slide. So the last thing I wanna share is um, prevention. Prevention as a strategy. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about investing in your health, really taking time to figure out what your body responds to and how you can do that in a consist consistent manner but also knowing that that can be overwhelming sometimes and that it's okay to do and make small changes. Think about ways of incorporating exercise, looking at your diet, like what works for you? What do you maybe need to avoid? What do you need to incorporate more of for foods? Um, also thinking about stress management. Um, if you work, thinking about how to achieve that work-life harmony. Um, ensuring that, you know, work is joyful and not of stress to you. And when it is stressful, how do you manage that? What do you do to um, be able to take care of yourself? What does that self-care look like? So really tapping into all of the preventative parts of how you can um, have better quality life, how you can live better with the different chronic illnesses that you may have. By doing that, by investing in yourself, you also are reducing financial stress, you're improving your emotional health, your physical health, your mental health. Really all of this works together. Um, it's, it's not, you know, they're not separate things. Everything is connected and you really wanna be able to start focusing on your health so that you can ultimately impact in, an, in a positive way all the different factors that um, make you live a better life. Um, one example that I wanted to share is that with my own health, um, since March 2022, I really decided I can't live like this. This is just an ongoing repeated cycle of just symptoms and hospitalizations. And, you know, it's, it's, it's vicious and it takes a lot from you and it's expensive. And so March, 2022, I decided I am going to just start with one change, do it consistently, see if it makes a difference. If it made a difference for me, if I noticed something in a given month, I kept with it. And then I added something else. 
adding another thing to it, you know, that it makes it more manageable. You're not doing everything all at once because you're just going to get overwhelmed and not be able to keep up with it. So I made all those changes and it took roughly around two and a half years to actually see um, visible differences. As a result of those differences, I see my doctors less. I haven't had any hospitalizations. I have been able to reduce my medications. All of those things contribute to financial burden. They reduce your burden in that I'm not paying for as many um, medication copays. I'm not paying for as many hospitalizations. You know, I'm reducing the cost because I'm doing better with my health. So really prevention is so important and you can do it slowly. You don't have to do it all at once. That's my key advice. Tackle one thing, pick one thing and just focus on doing that and then add more as you feel comfortable with what you've incorporated into your life. So we're gonna go to the next slide and I am going to turn it over to our next presenter, Nick Turkis, who's gonna give you another example about prevention as a strategy. Yeah, thanks, Rick, so much. I, I, I really loved your example of incorporating or stacking some healthy habits to improve your health and improve your financial health. Uh, I wanna talk quickly about gout. Gout is a form of arthritis. It's actually one of the most common forms of inflammatory arthritis. And gout is known as causing these severe, painful attacks. It can be so painful that many people end up in the emergency room if they, um, if uh, they're, they're, when their gout flare gets out of control. And going to the emergency room can be very expensive. Uh, if you're uh, having a gout attack, oftentimes you may not be able to go to work. And for many people, if they don't go to work, they don't, they don't get paid. Uh, they may not have paid sick time. And so getting gout under control is a great strategy uh, to manage your health, but also your financial health. Um, many people think of those gout attacks as that's, you know, that's the gout. And when it's, when the attack is over that you really, you don't have to worry about it anymore. But uh, the uric acid buildup of gout continues um, and it lingers and it really is a, a bit of a ticking time bomb when that next gout attack will happen. Well, the good news is there are many low cost medications that you need to take regularly. If you have uh, more than one gout attack a year, um, you should talk to your doctor about um, seeing if these medications are right for you uh, to prevent um, that uh, uh, damage that can occur from the long-term buildup of uric acid that causes those gout attacks, but also keep you out of urgent care, out of the emergency room and uh, at work and being productive. And with that, I'm going to now pass it to our next um, presenter, Kimberly, who's gonna be talking about affordable uh, medical care. So I'm Kimberly Johnson. And again, I'll be talking to you about affordable um, medical care. So I'm gonna um, move to the next slide. So the wonderful world of commercial insurance. Um, employer in commercial coverage, I'm just gonna give you a little overview of it. So employer sponsored insurance includes many benefit packets and it helps with chronic conditions such as arthritis. Commercial health insurance can be purchased if um, employer coverage is unavailable. And the types of health plan insurances out there is PPL, Preferred Provider Organization. It's a network of preferred providers. Um, you can see out of network doctors, but it's at a little higher cost and no specialty referral is needed for that particular type of insurance. HMO stands for Health Maintenance Organization. You must use the network providers except in an emergency. It requires a primary care physician, sometimes um, said as a PCP, and you need a specialist referral. But there are lower premiums, but there's less flexibility with the HMO. Then there's the high deductible health plan. It's HDHP and it's a higher deductible, but lower premiums. 
Um, it's also supported with HSA, which is a health savings account, which is a tax-free saving for medical expenses if you use it. The other type of um, plan is EPO, Exclusive Provider Organization. It's a network-only provider. There's no out-of-network care except for emergencies. And you don't need a specialist referral. Then there's the POS, which stands for Point of Service. It is another network of providers. And if you see a provider out of network, it's gonna be at a higher cost. And it does require a PCP referral to see a specialist. And then we have the self-funded plan, which is an employee, your employee pays a claim directly, and then it's managed by a third party administrator, sometimes referred to as a TPA. So the best thing to do is to regularly review your insurance options and stay updated on enrollment dates to manage expenses better and to save money. All right, this is government insurance. And as you see, there is a web link right at the top, www.healthcare.gov. And we'll briefly talk about Medicare, the Affordable Care Act, and it's sometimes referred to as Obamacare, and then Medicaid and CHIP. So Medicare, open enrollment is um, October 15th to December. The Affordable Care Act, or the Obamacare, is um, open enrollment is November 1st to December 15th. So the Obamacare um, makes health insurance accessible and affordable and does cover pre-existing conditions. The Medicare, um, they do have special enrollment period. So if you're not able to enroll during that time, if you have events like um, change in employment, marriage, or uh, a significant change in your income, you can sometimes enroll outside of that enrollment period. And then there's the Medicare Medicaid chip. So Medicare is for those that are 65 or without a qualifying disability, but you can visit medicare.gov to get additional information. And then Medicaid slash chip is for low income individuals and family and children. And to get more information about that, you can visit medicaid.gov. All right, if you go to the next slide, I'd like to talk about some key insurance words. Premiums, deductibles, copay, coinsurance, out-of-pocket maximum. I know we've heard all these before, so I'm gonna go over them a little bit. So the premium is the monthly payment to keep insurance active. It's like, a, like paying a subscription fee. Deductible is an out-of-pocket expense before insurance starts to pay. Copay, it's a fixed fee for each medical visit or prescription. Coinsurance is a percentage of your medical bills you pay after meeting a certain deductible. Out-of-pocket maximum is the most you'll pay annually for covered services after reaching it. Insurance will then cover 100% of the expense. So understanding these terms uh, to manage your healthcare costs effectively. But if you have any questions, contact your insurance provider for specific policy details. Thank you, and we can move to the next slide. All right, health insurance, denials and appeals. So on your left-hand side of the slide is reasons for insurance denials. And on your right-hand side of the slide, it's gonna talk about steps to take when facing a denial. So some of the common reasons for a denial often occur due to lack of medical necessity, services not covered under your plan, 
you need prior authorization before you can have something done or the doctor incorrectly codes or there's some billing errors. So those could be some reasons for a denial. But review your policy carefully, your health insurance policy, just to understand your current your coverage and any limitations. But there are some tips for a successful appeal. You know, first, be persistent. Don't give up. If initially um, the appeal is denied, be persistent and continue to um, advocate for your coverage. You can also seek some assistance. Consider consulting with a healthcare advocate or even an attorney who specializes in inter insurance appeals. Understand your rights, familiarize yourself with your rights as a consumer in the appeal process that's gonna be outlined in your health insurance policy. And by all means, make sure you document everything. Keep detailed records, all your communication with the insurance company, letters, emails, phone calls, keep all of that. And remember, navigating the health insurance denial can be very frustrating, but it's important to be persistent and advocate for your rights. By following these steps and seeking assistance when needed, you can definitely increase your chances of a successful appeal. All right, we can talk about the next slide, which is access to a physician. So uh, um, uh, let's see, finding your uh, uh, right specialist, so a rheumatologist will treat your arthritis and um, rheumatoid disease. Then you have a pediatric rheumatologist what will manage your arthritis for your uh, babies, your children. You have orthopedic surgeon who will focus on surgical treatment for your joints. And then you have a primary care physician, sometimes referred to as a PCP, who will handle your general health management and um, any specialist referrals that you may need. And then some insurance considerations. Uh, In-network provider will reduce out-of-pocket costs. Um, check your insurance provider's website or uh, customer service. And if you're uninsured, you can um, look to the federally qualified health centers, and sometimes you'll see it abbreviated as FQHC. Uh, they offer a comprehensive services on a sliding scale based on income, and you'll also um, here, some folks reference the federally qualified health centers as uh, clinics, but you can definitely um, find those at Fine Health um, Center. Additionally, access to the appropriate medical care is crucial to managing your arthritis and chronic disease. So utilize available resources and specialties whenever um, the insurance allows. So on this slide, you're gonna be able to see where you can look for your in-network physician. So there's a link. And if you're not insured, it gives you the link to the FQHC at the very bottom of the deck. All right, if we could please move to the next slide. And then we are gonna um, go over urgent care versus emergency room. So when do you go to urgent care? You go to urgent care for non-life-threatening issues, needing quick attention, such as minor injuries, mild illnesses, minor infections, or routine procedures. They're very convenient. They have extended hours. They include evenings and weekends. When would you go to an emergency room versus the urgent care? So you would go to the emergency room for a severe life-threatening condition such as a heart attack, severe breathing issues, major injuries, stroke symptoms. 
And that's when you would definitely want to visit your emergency room. Anything that's going to require um, an immediate medical intervention. Because the emergency room is definitely equipped to handle comprehensive care. All right, so some of the key differences versus urgent care and emergency room. And one of the key differences is the waiting time. Urgent care is generally a shorter wait time because it's uh, um, not as uh, serious as something that would bring you to the emergency room. The emergency room is usually a longer wait period because they have to triage and prioritize the patients that need the more immediate attention. Additionally, cost is a key difference. So urgent care is less, less expensive and you probably most likely have a lower copay, whereas emergency room care is very expensive and it does have a higher copay. And then just looking at some of the differences in services. So for urgent care, um, immediate care for minor issues, basic labs, um, tests and x-rays you can have done in urgent care. For the emergency room, it's for uh, the services they provide are more advanced diagnostic. They have specialized staff. They can do surgery. They can do um, intensive treatment. So choosing urgent care for routine or non-severe issues is a good way to save money and time. Choosing the emergency room for serious life-threatening emergencies is the better choice over urgent care. All right, so if you could move to the next slide. Access to medication. Um, so do you have insurance? If yes, check, the, check your insurance benefits, review your plan's formulary for current medications. And formulary just means the list of medications that your health plan or your insurance carrier covers. Confirm your benefits, contact your customer service to understand the coverage and any out of cost pocket, um, cost of care you'll have to pay out of pocket. And then um, you wanna consider barriers too, such as high cost. So look for assistance programs and then um, anything that's gonna create a, a denial or delay. So work with your provider on steps for therapy or prior authorization. So um, there's this thing called step therapy. At a lot of the health insurance, they want you to try certain medication or, or certain um, procedures before they'll approve something that's higher up on the ladder. So make sure you understand um, the step therapy. Because if you go past it, you definitely uh, may get your claim denied. High cost copay. There are manufacturer assistance, so use copay cards or discount programs for drugs from your manufacturer. And then medication resources. Uh, there is a Medicare Rights Helpline. So you uh, let's see if it's listed. It's not listed there. Um, so that number is one eight hundred three 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 four one one four. And then um, there's Social Security Extra Help. And then there's um, SHIIP, which is Free Medicare Counseling and Assistance. So are we on the right slide? Let me just make sure. Yeah. And then there is, um, let me hold on. Can we go to the next slide? I just want to make sure that I'm not mixing the two slides together. Okay, so let's just look at this one. Um, so this is access to your medication. And then um, this is generic versus brand name options, uh, copay assistant programs, mail order, good RX. Um, there's high copay. So you just wanna make sure if there's any manufacturers, discounts, make sure you get that. And then there is a two, um, thousand RX cap coming in 2025. Please for Medicare. 
for Medicare. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. <laughs> That's right. That's an important change next year. Yeah, the, that the most is... you'll pay for uh, medication if you're on a Medicare plan is $2,000. With the ability to smooth those costs or spread the costs uh, uh, over monthly over monthly payments. So that's a, that's a big, important change. Is yeah. that an automatic change or do patients need to- Everyone will get the $2,000 cap, but if you want to do the smoothing, if you want to spread the cost, that is something you'll have to opt into. All right. So um, I don't see the phone numbers on these. So if anyone wants them, just make note if you need the Medicare Right Helpline or the Social Security Extra Help or the SHIIP. So those will be available for anyone that needs those. So using assistant programs and contacting customer service um, and consult your healthcare providers to manage medication costs and uh, your coverage effectively. So that's a good way to do that. You can move to the next slide, please. All right, access to equipment, assistant devices for arthritis. So what types of devices are there? Braces, walkers, ergonomic tools. So the need for prescriptions, consult with your healthcare provider for um, professional recommendations. You can speak with a physician, a physical therapist, or an occupational therapist. They can recommend and document necessary devices to support the usage of those um, DMEs that you may need. Insurance coverage. Understand your coverage for medical necessary device and required documentation. And then there are state assistant programs. So there's uh, the resource would be the state specific program may offer funding or loans. So check with your state. And then some useful links would be, um, let's see if it's on there, paying for seniors.care, durable medical equipment. It's listed right there. And I don't know if these links are available to those that are on the call that may have it. I don't know if they get this, the presentation or how they could get those. Um, we'll talk about our helpline at the end. And if you have okay. any questions about this presentation, you can call our helpline or message our helpline. They'll have this presentation and they'll be able to provide links and assistance and make sure everybody is, is comfortable. So uh, if you aren't taking notes, you can always, always uh, call our helpline and they'll help you out. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so you want to engage with your healthcare professional and your insurance provider to access necessary devices that you may need. And uh, always keep in mind that there are state programs. Uh, you can check with them for any additional resources. All right, we can move to the next slide, please. Paying for your um, medical care. So on the left-hand side of the slide, it's your Social Security Extra Help Program. What is it? It helps people with limited income and resources. It lowers um, or cuts Part, part D costs. And the eligibility requirements, You, um, if you go online at Social Security Administration, you'll be able to find that information. On the right-hand side of your slide, is the 2025 IRA Inflation Reduction Act. So the implications for prescription drug costs and Medicare Advantage plans, capping the cost of medication and healthcare. So insulin is gonna be capped at $35. Medication is capped at, as we talked about on the earlier slide, $2,000. And um, it can be stretched throughout the whole year. If we can move to the next slide. Medical bill repayment and forgiveness. So review the medical bills, your bills for accuracy. Definitely wanna check them and make sure they're correct. Itemized bills versus EOB, explanation of benefits. So every time you have a claim, your insurance carrier should be sending you an EOB so that you can review that. Contact the provider and ask, um, if your, your charges can be eliminated or reduced. Ask about hospital or medical health system charity care programs. 
if they have any forgiveness um, loan programs and uh, ask to pay the bill in monthly payments opposed to all at one time. And then we're gonna move to careers, which is our very last slide. Yep. So, so I'm in addition to here. dealing, oh, go ahead, deal, okay. in addition to dealing with expenses, you can look at ways to increase your income, right? So there are um, job boards that can uh, help people living with arthritis and disability to find remote work or vocational rehab that's available through state agencies uh, to help train you. Uh, for particular jobs that you're interested in or providing equipment to make those jobs accessible. Um, you can also leverage the benefits you have, like um, if you have, uh, you need to use the Family and Medical Leave Act because you need to go to infusion appointments or you, you've had a recent surgery. Um, if you have short-term disability uh, because of a, a flare-up or um, a surgery that would uh, cause you to have to dip into those benefits. Um, but it's important to talk with your, your, um, your employer if you're currently employed uh, and letting them know um, that you have a legitimate medical claim and that you're entitled to these uh, benefits that are uh, provided um, through your employment and guaranteed by the government. And I wanna thank Kimberly for her amazing review of insurance. It's a it's a lot to get through to talk about uh, insurance, but insurance is such an important uh, part of accessing medical care and by better understanding insurance and accessing your healthcare benefits, you can really help reduce your costs. I'm gonna move into talking about um, empowering your wallet uh, to reduce some of those household income, um, uh, household expenses. If we take a look at this chart, you can see some of the biggest culprits when it comes to um, your, your budget, right? Your housing, your transportation, your car, and, or getting around, right? Your food costs, your grocery bill, um, uh, all, all add up significantly. And if we can take a look at ways to uh, reduce those costs or um, better manage those costs or tap into some programs, uh, that can help pay for some of these things, we can help reduce um, the burden on our budget. So first, let's talk about housing, right? We all need a place to live. And if you are currently in the market uh, looking for a new home, maybe you're ready to move out of your parents' house, maybe you are ready to downsize, maybe you need to move uh, to a new location because of a job, uh, where you live will have a huge impact on your costs, right? So, um, you know, thinking about where you live, is, if you require a lot of medical care, it's important to think about a location that is near um, uh, your, your physician, right? If you are traveling uh, long, long commutes to your healthcare provider, that can certainly be e expensive. Also, having access to um, hospital and pharmacy, right? So you want to think about that. You also want to think about the type of home that you have. Um, you may want to balance a smaller home uh, with a home that's a little bit easier to maintain, right? Um, I always say that I like my smaller home because it's less to clean, less to heat, less to cool. Um, and so it just makes life a little bit easier and, it, uh, uh, and a little bit less expensive. Um, there are some communities that provide uh, services like uh, man maintaining the exterior of your home if you live in a condominium or if you live in certain uh, communities, they'll mow your grass for you or take care of your um, front lawn or your or flower beds, things like that. So thinking about um, that can certainly be helpful, but also thinking about homes that are a little bit more accessible, uh, maybe homes that are single story and you don't have stairs to contend with, or you don't have to go, um, uh, if you don't have, if you have a, a garage that you can park in and walk straight into your home versus uh, parking on the street or parking um, at a garage where you have to walk through maybe weather where it can be slippery or icy or, or wet. Uh, so it just, 
think about the whole cost of your of your home and uh, that can help you uh, better manage those expenses. For many people, buying a home is the most expensive uh, financial transaction that they'll have in their entire life, right? So um, a big part of buying a home is saving for a down payment. Sometimes you have to put down as much as 20% down on a home. And for many folks that can require a lot of saving, right? Um, there are some things that you can do to make it a little bit easier. Um, and that would be um, putting your, your savings in a high yield savings account. Uh, one of the rare uh, benefits of the high interest that we're experiencing right now is that there are more uh, high yield savings accounts that are available. Many of them are available on online banks. It's important to make sure that they're FDIC. That means they're insured, uh, but you'll get um, four or five percent saving uh, interest uh, a year on those high yield savings account versus less than a percent in many traditional banks. You can also tap into your 401k or IRA uh, to uh, use for a down payment. Uh, if you do that, you will not have a penalty. Typically, if you take money out of your 401k or uh, 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 Reti uh, retirement account, you have to pay a 10% fee. If you pay for a home, you don't have to pay that fee, but you will have to pay taxes on, on the money that you take out. So it's not without any penalty, but it's less of a penalty than you just took it out and spent it on um, everyday expenses. There also is some help with getting a home loan through FHA, uh, the Federal Housing Authority, or the Veterans Administration. And even the USDA uh, provides help with purchasing uh, rural uh, uh, homes in rural areas or farm, farm areas. Once you have a home, it's important to maintain it. And maintaining a home can be very expensive, right? If you have to buy a new roof or a new HVAC system, if you need to weatherize it, right? If you need insulation for your home. I'm not gonna read all of these out to you um, or explain how every single one of these programs work, but I do want you to be aware that these programs do exist to help weatherize your home, to repair your home, to ensure that your home is energy efficient, um, that you have access to um, low, uh, low cost loans to improve your home. Uh, many of these programs are available through HUD or the Housing and uh, Urban Development. Um, you can um, talk to your bank. Oftentimes the vendors that sell um, roofs and HVAC systems and, and things like that, they often are pretty savvy about how to tap into these programs to help purchase uh, this. The only other program that I will mention is uh, critical home repair from um, the, um, gosh, um, it will it will come to me, uh, but there are that there are other uh, community health program uh, community housing programs that can help uh, improve your home, weatherize your home, and make your home more livable. All right, um, paying for housing and utilities. There are some other programs that are available, um, just mainly through city and county governments and through your in uh, your heating or gas company. I wanna point out uh, LIHEAP in particular, that's the Low Income Home and Energy Assistance Program. They can help pay for your heating bill or your gas bill and uh, can sometimes help with it, your um, air conditioning bills. Um, they can help reduce the cost or spread the cost over a longer period of time and that can be very, very helpful. Getting energy efficient um, appliances can help reduce the cost to run them. If you are purchasing an air conditioner or furnace, uh, even things like your stoves, your washing machine, your dryers, Energy Star um, appliances cost much less to run and that will cost you less in the long run. Again, there is lots of great helpful programs and resources for housing and uh, maintaining your home, again, through the Federal Housing Administration, the Department of Veterans Affairs, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and HUD. 
Um, if you need help with rent assistance, there is a, um, a website that we've posted on here, rentassistance.us, that will point you to some uh, programs that can help um, uh, reduce the cost of your rent. Uh, if you want to stay in your home um, in the, for the long term, you may want to think about planning for long-term care needs, right? So if you're diagnosed with a chronic disease, um, you may want to think about things like long-term care insurance. Uh, long-term care insurance can help uh, pay for in-home care, right? They could pay for um, medical or non-medical help um, from caretakers uh, that can come to your uh, home and help you uh, with meal preparation and, um, you know, light personal care. Um, and that long-term care insurance can also help pay for if you need to move to um, assisted living or for skilled nursing home care. Those those places can often be very expensive. Private pay can be very expensive and long-term care insurance can often uh, significantly reduce those costs. You typically don't want to buy those um, long-term care insurance too early. Um, you, playing for them when you're 20, 30 years old is probably not worth it. But as you move into your 40s and 50s, um, that is usually the sweet spot. If you wait too long, the premiums can be pretty expensive. So 40s and 50s, talk to uh, a broker about uh, long-term care insurance and if that's a good decision for you. Uh, earlier, uh, we had a poll and one of those poll questions was about um, you know, tax breaks or maximizing your tax benefits um, for, for medical expenses. And the reality is, is that there, there are ways that you can um, you can deduct healthcare expenses if you itemize your taxes. However, for most people, the standard deduction is probably a better deal than itemizing. Um, the the recent tax changes in the last couple of years made the standard deduction pretty high for most people. However, if you have medical expenses that exceed 7.5% of your adjusted gross income, and that is something that we always calculate on our tax returns, if it's more than 7.5%, itemization may make sense and you can, you can um, deduct some of those expenses um, from your, your tax bill. So it is something that you wanna keep detailed records and it is something that if you're going to make this itemization, it's always a great idea to consult with a tax professional to ensure that you filed it properly um, and that your the amount that you took is, is accurate. We talked about um, high deductible health plans and high deductible health plans are often uh, paired with health savings accounts. Health savings accounts provide you with a tax advantage because you can put money into HSAs tax-free and you can pay for things tax-free. So there's kind of a, a double benefit there um, for uh, using HSAs in collaboration with a high deductible health plan. Now this obviously has to be for medical expenses, uh, but it is something that, that for some people, it makes a lot of sense uh, to use a high deductible health plan save some money pre-tax and um, purchasing that um, needed medical supplies or medications or um, healthcare costs um, without having to pay uh, tax on top of it. Long-term care insurance premiums may be tax deductible. Again, depending on your financial situation, always talk to your broker and your uh, tax professional. Uh, to, to be helpful. And, and, in, and in some cases, it really, it, it really matters what state you live in, right? There are state income taxes, right? And there are state tax benefits. So um, checking those local, local rules is always very important. Grocery bills, right? Um, it seems like <laughs> every day the cost of paying for the food that we, we eat is more and more expensive. Um, so the, the, the key tip here is to plan your meals and avoid impulse purchases. I like to use online ordering. So I order my, my groceries on an app 
And that way I'm not tempted by those cookies on the end cap or any, you know, splurge uh, items that I see. And I typically am able to order the same things. You know, usually 80% of what I buy is the same as what I bought last, last week. Um, so that makes things nice and easy for me. Um, buying and cooking in bulk or stocking up. If you have arthritis and you're, you're having a good day and you're able to um, do some meal prep and freeze some meals that you may want to use later when you're having a flare up, may save you some money and save you a little bit of time and headache. Um, always consider store brands or generic brands. Oftentimes they're made in the same factory as store as those fancy uh, brand names. Um, coupons are still available, paper coupons, but there are coupon apps like Ibotta uh, that can give you uh, a money back for your purchases. Um, store cards can often be, uh, loyalty cards can often help save you money. And also, you know, be creative about how you reuse food. Uh, and lastly, if you're able to you grow some of your food, I know herbs can be quite expensive. Uh, so if you're able to grow them even in a little pot in, on your kitchen counter, um, that's a great way to save costs. But if you can grow a vegetable garden, uh, even container gardens, people with arthritis can do that um, or raise beds and make it easy for you to do that. You can save a lot of money on your, on your produce bills. Uh, there are some cheap, uh, low cost, high nutritional foods that I always recommend, uh, beans and lentils for protein and fiber, um, rice and pasta are low cost and they're great filler. Um, but things like, uh, rice, like brown rice and pasta that, uh, uses, uh, grains or, it, um, um, can, can be uh, a healthy alternative to uh, traditional white uh, rice and uh, bleached pasta. Dried spices versus fresh often can pack just as much of a flavorful punch. Um, chicken and pork versus beef is typic, uh, typically cheaper. Eggs and tofu, tofu are low cost protein. Um, and think about frozen fruits and vegetables and seasonal produce to help reduce your grocery bills. Frozen fruits and vegetables have just as much nutrition, if not more, than fresh fruits and vegetables. If you're cooking, um, you want to say make some cheap and healthy meals, things to do like stir fries and soups and stews. I am a huge fan of my slow cooker and Instapot. I love making uh, soups and stews. I make, a, I make a tomato soup at the beginning of the week, plain tomato soup. And then throughout the week, I take any of my proteins that I had for dinner, like if I had leftover chicken or leftover um, pork, and I just cut it up and I put it in the soup the next day, and that's my meal. And it's 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 low cost. I didn't waste any food, and it's it's simple and easy. So using some of those tips to help reduce costs um, and still have a healthy meal um, by planning it out, right, um, is definitely a great thing to do. Um, so these are some, some real classics. Um, if you need help paying for food, um, you can use a supplemental nutrition assistance program, uh, SNAP benefits. Um, the, the, you will get an EBT card or a card, um, that you can apply for and it can help pay for food. Uh, I don't have it listed here, but also WIC program for women's infants and children can help pay for healthy, nutritious food. And there is no shame in using a food bank or food pantry or Meals on Wheels programs. This is what they are for to help people uh, ensure people have access to nutritious food, especially um, if you are uh, ha having food security issues, if you're having trouble making a decision between food and rent or food and medicine please use these programs because they are available in most communities and they are here to help out. Um, getting around transportation costs. Uh, we talked about that first. Do you need to drive? Um, can it be delivered, right? Um, if you have things like Amazon Prime, can you have it delivered? Can you, um, is it, uh, will a pharmacy oftentimes will have free delivery services for medication? Um, think about ride sharing or carpooling. Maybe you can use ride sharing and carpooling uh, because you only drive occasionally and you may not need the expense of a car. And think about public transportation. 
um, buses and trains and metros are available in many cities. And for people with disabilities, there's something called paratransportation, where often you can have a um, at-home pickup. You typically have to schedule that in advance, um, but um, uh, because of the, uh, the, um, the uh, Disabilities Act, the Americans with Disabilities Act, that um, paratransportation is available um, in most communities. Again, I talked about the American Disabilities Act and that paratransit service. Um, there are often reduced fare programs for people, sometimes seniors, people with disability. Uh, many communities have community transportation programs. Uh, oftentimes it's worth checking out the Area Agency on Aging. They often have um, ride share or um, pickup programs. They may be to specific places like to just to the grocery store or just to the pharmacy or just to a healthcare provider, but they can be very handy if you need it. Um, they have mobility management services, things like helping you get in and out of a car. Uh, and some communities even provide a voucher to use apps like Uber or Lyft, and that can be very helpful. I know that Uber and Lyft often will even help people uh, get to the polls. We have an election coming up, and so it's important that everyone votes. There are some ways to maintain your, um, your car or your vehicle. Um, there are vocational rehab services that can pay for it, Medicare waivers. If you're a veteran, there are adaptive equipment programs, um, the social security work incentives that can help you save to pay for a car. And we talked about state assistance technology programs. Uh, again, we talked about a, a medical equipment, but they can often provide adaptive equipment for you to be able to drive. Things that like, can adapt to your seat, your pedals, your steering wheel, um, to make it uh, ways to get in and out of a car. Those programs are available and something you should check out. If you're if you're curious about how to work, uh, find out about these uh, the the state assistance technology program. Occupational therapists are often a great resource that can help you tap into those programs, as well as our helpline, the Arthritis Foundation helpline. Paying for education and child care, make sure to, to use that child care tax credit when you file your taxes. Um, also, there may be state, uh, state subsidized health care programs. Check out childcare.gov or programs like Head Start. They can help with um, early um, uh, schooling. Uh, for young children. Um, there are scholarships that are available for people, for uh, students with disabilities and health issues. In fact, the, the Arthritis Foundation even has a college scholarship for children with juvenile arthritis. Pell grant, Grants help pay for, uh, provide uh, low income grants uh, for, uh, for um, college students uh, to go to university or college. And there are student loan and forgiveness programs. Gover uh, these government-backed loans often will be uh, paid off after a number of years. Um, there are uh, government-backed um, uh, forgiveness programs for folks that work in, for charities, um, that work as teachers, that work in healthcare. Um, I can say that I work have worked for a charity for more than 25 years and my student loan uh, was partially forgiven because of this program, and I am very grateful for that. Um, again, we talked about lots of ways to, to save um, through health savings or long-term care and all of these tax deductions. It really, it really takes a comprehensive um, review of all of your expenses and all of these available programs. It may seem like a lot to kind of get your head around at first, but the most important thing is to think about where your costs are high and tap into the programs um, that can benefit you most. Thinking about um, the Arthritis Foundation Helpline, um, talking about some of these government uh, programs uh, and 1-800 and numbers can really help you decode all of these hidden benefits. Uh, I also wanna talk about debt, right? You know, Some folks may have racked up debt because of uh, medical costs. They may have racked up debt because of credit cards, right? And so there are programs available to help review your spending and review your credit and help you repair your credit or help deal with some of these high um, um, debts that you have incurred. Um, there are some debt management plans. Typically, I would say work with nonprofit or government debt management plans versus private 
Um, oftentimes there can be fees associated with private uh, debt management or credit counseling. So ensure that you're working with, again, uh, nonprofit or government uh, services. Uh, contacting legal aid, they can el often help you with um, reducing your debts or uh, working with uh, nonprofit debt relief agencies or, or hooking you up with um, debt relief agencies. And in extreme cases, bankruptcy may be an option to help eliminate debt. Again, working with um, legal aid is a great way, a low cost way to look into that possibility and how it will affect your credit and your long-term financial health. Uh, I also want to go back to what we talked about in the beginning, and that is um, wellness resources, right? Maintaining your health is one of the best ways to reduce costs. So think about things like using physical therapy and exercise programs, uh, mental health, things like support groups. The Arthritis Foundation has wonderful support groups um, that are available for you to go to in person or online. And talk to your healthcare provider about physical therapy and an exercise programs that may benefit you. Um, you know, by managing your financial stress, you'll help with your, your mental stress, right? Um, our, our financial health definitely affects our mental health and our mental effect, health affects our physical health and vice versa. So find, you know, understanding your mental health concerns, finding counseling or support groups or community services uh, that can help you uh, manage your mental health. You may even think about apps to help you with meditation, journaling, um, faith-based institutions that can help you um, better manage your financial health. And often working with the professionals like financial counseling can make you feel more at ease mentally. Lots of great community health resources for things that I talked about, things like the YMCA that provides sliding scale um, fees for membership. Many faith communities have fitness and mental health and arts and crafts and fun activities that you can do to, that are low cost, fun, and, and reduce stress. Check out your local parks and rec, right? Get out on the trail, get out on the pickleball court. Um, many of these uh, parks and recs programs and facilities are free or low cost. And don't forget about other community uh, centers and senior centers. Again, low cost uh, entertainment, fun, physical activity, and um, services are available all throughout America that make it um, a great place to live um, and great activities at, at definitely low, low cost compared to many other places. We talked about lots and lots of links. Uh, the, the one I love here is the Arthritis Foundation Helpline. Uh, at 1-800-283-7800. If you have questions about anything that we talked about, definitely call that number. 211 is a great uh, information line that helps you tap into um, charity services and government services. Findhelp.org is a great community resource locator. You put in your zip code and it will help you find tools and access for food, housing, everything that we talked about. The NCOA has a benefits checkup to help you with um, all of the services that you're eligible for if you are a senior. And there's a government assistance locator as well. So all of these things are available. You have to work for it a little bit, but lots and lots of help available. I'm gonna skip this for now because I know we're running low on time and I wanna make sure we have time for some questions. Um, but uh, just, just wrapping things up, uh, knowing that you can reduce your financial stress by better understanding your insurance and better understanding these community and government programs to help reduce costs. And don't, for, and don't hesitate to ask for help. These programs are here for you and, uh, and you, you have a right to them and, you, and you've earned them. Um, and it's the right thing to do to provide these services for folks. Uh, first question, I buy a lot of supplements to support immune system and other parts of the body affected by my rheumatoid arthritis. Is there any help for those expenses? Um, to be honest, I do not know of a direct, you know, um, insurance program uh, to help pay for supplements. It, in some cases, you may, you may be able to pay for them through your um, health savings account. 
I would double check um, to see if the particular supplements that you're buying are covered. Um, so that may be one thing that you can do. Buying in bulk or buying online often um, is something that you can do to help reduce costs. I would also look at what is the main ingredient in those in the supplement that you're buying, and is it available at a lower cost? Um, there is um, a supplement that helps with your hair and nails. Um, so there's a, bra a fancy brand name, I won't mention it, but they have a very beautiful jar and, a very, and they have lots of commercials right now. But the main ingredient is biotin. You can buy biotin for very, very cheap at most pharmacies. Um, and it's the same exact biotin that you would get in the fancy supplements. So sometimes just thinking about what the, the main ingredient is in the supplement and, you know, oftentimes just talking to your pharmacist, you know, what, what supplement or supplement company is reputable at a lower cost uh, is something that can be a benefit for you as well. We're, we have a minute left, um, but Kimberly, can you share what strategies um, you'd recommend using to maximize health benefits? Um, I would definitely look at the, for preventative care. <clears throat> I'm sorry, say that one more time. Was it for preventative care? I'm sorry, what, what's your question? Um, I was asked a question and I was going to respond to it. I just want to make sure I understood it. Yeah. So what are strategies that you use to maximize your health benefits? One of the ways to maximize your health benefits is to go to all of your preventative care that they offer because that's at no cost. And then it is at those visits that you can sit down and talk to the doctor if there are additional things that you need to do in addition to that. But that is the best strategy. Uh, women get breast exams. Males get um, testicular exams. Children get well visits. If you have chronic diseases, you can get your blood pressure checked. You can get lab work done. And all that is under preventative care. So for most um, insurance, those are covered with insurance, that's all free. So definitely look at your uh, health plan to see what's covered under your preventative visits. But that's the best way to maximize it. And then medications come in different tiers. So you may want to use generic medications versus brand name. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, Nick, can you, we had a, a few questions in regards to what you shared about the Medicare cap. Can mm -hmm. you explain that in a little bit more detail? Sure, sure. So this is the benefit that will kick in next year with, with um, in 2025. And if you have Medicare, so that is the, that is the key. This is not for everyone with insurance. This is just Medicare there will be a $2,000 cap on medication. And that is nothing you don't need to enroll. It will just happen. If you, if you after you spend $2,000, that's it. You won't have to spend any more. Um, there is the option to spread out those costs. So say you have a very high, high cost medication. At the beginning of the year, that monthly fee might be very high. You can choose to spread it out again, no more than $2,000 and you can spread it across. Um, there's gonna be lots of information about this coming out, um, commercials and your pharmacist is definitely going to be well equipped with all of the information about how uh, to ensure that you don't go over that uh, $2,000 and, and how to opt into spreading out those costs. Thank you so much, Nick. So all of this is, there's a lot of resources, a lot of programs that you've heard about um, navigating and accessing these programs and resources can become overwhelming. You know, my advice for all of you is to, and Nick said this well in an earlier slide, but, you know, figure out what's most important for you. What's your primary need at this given moment that you feel like you need help with? And research those options that are available. It could be housing, it could be food, it could be getting support for your medications, whatever it is, pick that one thing and try to navigate that space and then work on to the next thing. 
Um, trying to do it all at once is is definitely impossible. So take it slow. Um, you know, work at your own pace and utilize all of the resources that are available to you. It's okay to ask for help. Help is there, um, and that's what they're there for. Um, and in particular, definitely the the helpline that the Arthritis Foundation can um, offer. It sounds like they're a great resource and can help you navigate um, and know where to begin with um, finding resources. I'm going to pass it back to you, Nick, um, to That's share right. some resources. Yeah, we've got uh, some quick resources. The helpline is up on the screen. Uh, definitely check that out. You can call 1-800-283-7800 or email us. Uh, know that there is um, uh, help if you if uh, you need uh, to speak to someone in Spanish, we can do that for you or any in tra or translate in many other languages. And they are really the experts when it comes to um, figuring out resources and understanding insurance. Um, they are the, a great resource because they know arthritis and they know the services that people need. Um, if you enjoyed this web uh, webinar, we encourage you to register for our next webinar, Living Well with Gout. I talked about gout earlier about how expensive it can be, uh, but learn to manage it. Uh, we've got a great expert. Uh, we'll also be talking about um, how kid your kidney health is affected by uh, gout. Uh, also, check out our connect groups. Those are our support groups for people with arthritis. We have groups in the community and online. Um, they're meeting all the time. Um, so uh, check out some upcoming uh, groups. You can talk to other people about what they do to save money and manage their health. And we also have a fantastic podcast. Um, there are um, dozens and dozens of episodes that you can dig into um, a podcast that interests you, um, arthritis.org.podcast. Um, these resources that we mentioned again, healthcare.gov, um, triage cancer actually helps people with lots of health issues. They have insurance and financial decisions. And we talked about the SHIP State Health Insurance Assistance Program. These are the masters of Medicare. They can help you with in-person advice on how to manage your, your Medicare benefits. So definitely if you get uh, if you're in during this open enrollment period and you're uh, signing up for the first time or switching plans, definitely check out our friends at SHIP. I think we're it's time to close this, close it out. What do you think, Rick? Rick? Yeah, thank you all for joining us. Um, I hope that you access some of these resources and programs um, and that you connect with the helpline and check out other opportunities that come through through the Arthritis Foundation. Hope you all have um, a good evening and we'll see you soon.